Hey, welcome to this little series on animating a character for a pixel art game. You can think of this as the sequel to the previous intro series on designing a character. Though this sprite was created for a different project, it picks up right where we left off, so I thought it'd be a good fit. I'm going to show you the whole process of a run and an idle animation from start to finish, as I think they're the most in demand. Alright, you ready? Let's go. Now, this is the character. She is, uh, she is a, an adventurer. She has a gun. Gun Ventura, that's who she is. You could think of her as, she could be sci-fi, she could be renaissance. You could put her in a bunch of different spaces and I think she'd work. This started out um, as a commission for Smokey Avocado. Smokey Avocado is one of the viewers here in chat. And he has a, uh, a team and they work on an app that lets you make games. And they originally commissioned me to design a character for that game making uh, app. So like a stock character you could use in your games. Basically, I'm just gonna take this lady, make a new file. And I think we wanna go instead 32 by 32. Man, that is not a lot of space to play in. Let's go back to 64 and I'll just make it like a, a nice bounding box so that I know where to stay within. Okay. I'll use this episode as a kind of, um, almost a tutorial for you guys. I'll explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it in a very literal, granular way so that you guys get some, uh, some value out of it. Now, as far as the character goes, um, I think this is a pretty decent idol. I like the pose. I think it's a strong one. There's maybe a little bit of work we could do, uh, just like here, I think. It's kind of a bit odd. Okay, so I think this is a kind of cool second idle pose. You take idle two, uh, and then let's let's try like a run. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go for eight. I usually do go for eight just because it's why not? It's more fun to do eight frames, right? I'm gonna onion skin this so I know where the proportions are. Gonna follow my own tutorial here. Now, how should this one be? And the first, the first like thing that you do doesn't super matter that much to be honest. What matters is what you do after that. So like, this is not gonna make much sense. Look at that, that's that's silly. And actually, we want this to be double two steps, not one. So let's come back to the beginning and make sure that this one and this one are the same. And then, dun, 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 dun. this one's gonna be like, one, down, down. And then like up maybe, beyond. Bup, bup, bup. Okay, so that's a bit closer. And actually, instead of it being down on down for two frames, I'm gonna actually shift this to be like up. So it's up for two frames. That's better. That's feeling more like a run. Top, 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 top. So, here's our head. The way I animate, the thing you should animate first is the most dynamic thing. Um, and then sort of uh, let the, like fill in the, the dependencies after that. So, uh, as far as like the head goes, like the head bobs up and down and the chest sort of, um, the head and the chest just offset in timing. So like, if I was to do it now, putting the chest in, the timing would be correct, but the position might not be. Same with the head right now. So you sort of have to sort of converge on the actual animation as you put in the limbs. You just want to like layer it all down 
in low fidelity and then gradually increase the fidelity. So uh, let's like, for example, we'll just do like the backhand, right? Now the backhand is, remember we have like two steps here. So it's like one, two, right? So it's like gonna be forward, back. I'm just gonna like draw in the hand, right? Okay, generally correct in terms of the timing and stuff. It looks a little silly, right? Because we have no real concept of like where it should be because we don't have a body yet. So we can sort of, inf we can like guess. So like this, I definitely want this to be further down and then to lift up, right? And then on this frame, I want it to open out a little bit. And then maybe come down a little more. And then this doesn't have to be quite so far forward. Same with this. This is the backhand, remember. Also, it could all of it be brought down a few pixels. So notice what I did there. I grabbed every frame on this layer and dragged it all together at once. Now this frame here, we want it to drag again, so like the arm doesn't rotate until it has to. There we go, it's starting to look a little better. I also want to have a bit of a smear here. So I know that I'm going from here to here in one frame, so we can actually drag this one out. We can do the same thing here on this frame. You know, we know we're going to be smearing between this point and this point, so we can draw between them. That's starting to look pretty good, huh? If not anatomically correct, definitely the motion feels, it feels smooth, right? Which is, which is good. Do you really need smears at this stage? Smears tend to be tools that I use early and tend to erase as I go further on in the detail. Smears are a good way of describing animation. And so at this stage, smears are like a tool to help me understand the animation rather than uh, an additional flourish at the end. You can use them as a, like a flourish at the end, but I'm using them here to help me understand the animation a bit better. Um, and I'll probably take them out. Consider, at this stage, everything that we've done is very low fidelity, right? There's no real cost to doing any anything at this level. Okay. And I think we can move the head a little bit further forward. All right, let's try the other hand. I think I need to just see it a bit better. And the beauty of, of doing uh, hands is you just swap, you just swap them. So when this hand is back, this hand is forward. And actually what I think I want to do is give this some 3D, some perspective. So the hand will actually be closer to the camera rather than out Mega Man style. You know, so we'll start bringing it down and then it's back and then it's back here. It's 
hard to show what this is doing, but man, it's hard to see for some reason what I'm doing. I don't know why. Here we go. So we get some legs in here. So already we have something that looks like a run, and we didn't really spend much time on this, we just did some whatever. So, the easy thing about runs is that when this arm is back, this is the front arm, the back leg is also back, right? And when this arm, which is the back arm, is in front, the front leg is also in front. So the timing should be pretty simple. So here, we see the head's down, this is the lowest point the head reaches. It's either when we make contact or when we push through. Um, in fact, let's make it when we push through. So like here, that's the lowest point that the leg is going to be on as we pass through. Because the next thing we do is bounce. I think my, le my hands are offset incorrectly. Yeah, they are, definitely. Okay, time to fix that. That'll be that'll be pretty quick. So what I want to do is move them forward two frames, both of the hands. One, two. One, two. And then grab these frames and put them back. Not like that. Hopefully that makes a bit more sense. Ah, oh, that's so much better. Yeah. So that they swing on the down. Right, that's what I'm trying to do. To here. And then returns down as the knee pushes through. Come up. Get ready. And then we fall. Pretty good. Now, uh, I think I've got these knees a little tall and that's going to stifle me a little. So I'm going to bring them, shave them down a little bit because what's actually going to happen is on this frame, I want it to be a little more straight. And on this frame, I actually want it to go out in front a little bit. I think that'll be more cartoony to have the legs sort of extend forward. More than that even. Pretty good. I, I do want it to have a bit more snap to it, but so far so good. Maybe this can be a little more forward as well. And then this one maybe could be a little further back. It's really the distance between the frames that'll sell that. Cool. It looks so alive. It looks really good. Uh, let's just duplicate this for the back leg. Alright, should be easy enough. And then put that behind the back hand. Offset it by four frames. So, take these four frames. Boop. Put them in front. Boop. Grab them all again. Boop. Yank them all back. So I took the, f the first four, put them in front, then took all of it and pulled it back. All right. And what that does is basically offsets the whole animation by half. And oh, I'm going to give it a different color now so we can actually tell the difference. We can go for this blue. And look at that. Magic. That's our second leg. Now, here's a problem. The crossover point is here. I don't like that. Not really where it should be. It's too far back. So maybe this leg can come forward a bit. And then on the crossover, this leg can also come forward. If I'm standing still, right? Generally speaking, your feet have to stand such that the center of your mass is between the feet. 
right? Otherwise, you're going to be balanced all wrong, right? If you lean forward, right, you need some way to sort of like, like offset that, right? Because your head and your torso are now leaning forward. So even though this is where your pelvis is, the center of mass is further forward, right? And so, similar thing when you're running, right? If you're running, when your legs cross over, they should cross at a point that makes sense for like the center of mass. Because if they crossed like back here, <laughs> this person's gonna fall over. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just doesn't work that way. That doesn't work. That both legs are too far back. They have to be balanced, right? They have to be, like basically be on opposite sides of the body and equidistant from the center rel relative to each other uh, at all times. So you can see here, that's why that trick works so well, the flipping trick. Because now when this is at its furthest back point, this is at its furthest forward point, right? Look at them, they're both basically even as far as their distance from this average kind of center of mass point here center of gravity and also so are the arms to to a lesser extent but you know still valid so i think we've done like a really good job so far i think this is feeling like a, a run animation i can see it you know i can see the character here now, before we do anything else, it, it's really a question of like, is this the character? Like, is this what we want? Right? Is that character a hero? Are they a coward? Are they running with purpose? Or are they running away from something? Every step you take beyond this point, if this is wrong, you're going to have to undo all of that to fix it. Right? So if I start shading the face or whatever, and the face is in the wrong spot, well, suddenly we've got to start mucking around with pixels and stuff, so. Now is the time to make the judgment call. So this is pretty, like, loose. The arms are pretty, like, lanky, I think. Uh, I think I'll... Make this a little less for the forward. Like I said, swinging the legs really far forward in front of the body is very cartoony. It's very, like, Woody from Toy Story. So like this, if we bring it back up and then straighten it out a little bit, we'll make it look a little more athletic. Right? A little less fun and games. And then looking at like the hands, the hands kind of look like they're closed fists, right? Um, and right now they're quite like, so they're swinging quite loose and low. Um, if we want them to be more like uh, like aggressive and like um, like a sprinter, you would have them be like a little more um, like a little less like low. Hang on, let me see if I can show you guys. So like running like this versus running like this, right? J bent at the elbows it says, you know, it's a little more tension in it. Um, whereas like having them swing um, is a little more like playful so they are bent you can see the bend here like imagining the forearm is here that's quite a strong bend you know that's still kind of like 90 degrees this is a little more open that is pretty open if you look at this frame it's pretty like dawdly right so we could close this arm a little bit And we could bring this in. Right? Feels a little stronger. We could even bring this up, higher up. 
feels feels more no nonsense now, right? At least it should do. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and if you just watch, like this is one of those things. It, it just comes down to being observant when you watch anime or TV or movies or whatever. You can see how in animation we communicate different kinds of runs, which is sometimes a little bit different to how people actually run. So, like, it's one thing if you're just starting out to look at, say, um, sprinters, right? Like in the Olympics, like that's one thing. But sprinters in the Olympics aren't most people. So, generally speaking, they're running in a way that is very efficiency based. And not actually for like storytelling, right? When people run in the Olympics, and so when you watch someone run in like a movie, keep in mind like that's an actor running. That's not a sprinter running. And the way an actor runs might be a little bit different. Maybe it is less efficient, but looks more dramatic. And so when you're animating like a character, it's the same sort of thing. You have to make that choice. Like, what is, what am I trying to communicate with my run? And what is the uh, like? What is the storytelling playbook? What does the playbook say on like how I should animate this kind of run for this kind of character? That's when I turn to references. The other thing with with animation is that it's all just mechanics anyway, right? So you can kind of just like play out the physics if you can, and it works that way too. There we go. All right, let's do the uh, upper limbs. I think I can get away with this on the same layer. Look at that. That's feeling good. Generally, I have like a color scheme system when I do my limbs. You probably noticed it by now. I have like the different shades of a color for the upper and lower parts of a body limb, like a limb. And then I try to keep the, each limb as different as possible from each other. And this is just a reference for me to help visualize the pose a little better. I got the legs wrong. They're offset the wrong way. The same leg is moving with the same arm. Uh, so take the legs and the legs and shift them forward. And then take you and you and shift them back. Now we should be, hey. Okay, let's put a shoulder in here. Now you start to see some inconsistencies when you start to join everything back up together. So like here, it's like, mm, this arm look, looking a little odd at that <clears throat> like level. This is fine, but we really stretched the upper arm on that last one.
It's not so bad, but it's just not quite right, is it? I think this one could be a little more down. Oh man, that's looking sick. That's probably one of the best running animations I've done ever. In time with the music. There's still a lot of cleanup to be done. It's not, it's not perfect. I don't think I really got her form yet. And to do that correctly, I think what I'm gonna have to do is take this, bring her out, and then put her at a bigger capacity so I can really see what we're working with here. So definitely shrink the arms down and the shoulders and then thin out that torso. Got to give her that arch back and the booty. Subtle changes make such a big difference. Suddenly it's a woman. So see how I, I've taken away the smears? Remember I was talking about that? It wasn't even on purpose, it just sort of, they just eroded away. Are you gonna make the plates on her legs flap? Yeah, def, for sure. It feels like a bit of deceleration here. I don't know if it's just me. I think this frame is kind of awkward. I don't like it. What is that? I try to not have any bad frames. Even if the motion is correct, so this is another thing to understand. Sometimes the motion can be correct, but the frame just looks bad, right? It's like, um, it's like having realistic lighting, but a bad photo, right? You can take a bad photo with realistic lighting. So the same way you can have a really cool animation, but all the frames can be wrong. <laughs> just like not photogenic, like that one. It's just not photogenic. If you saw someone doing this, you wouldn't think they were running. And it's not a big deal. It's more just in the case of like, if you're making a video game and the game pauses on this frame. It's like, ugh, a little awkward. See, like it didn't really change at all there, but I sort of just made this look, you know, a little less awkward. I also want like a little more lift with these knees. I don't really like how flat they are. Cool. Looking good. Hey pal, thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button, and then YouTube will tell me, and then I'll make more videos. That's nice.